Bringing these new approaches to the next generation of scientists is high on the agenda for both practitioners and teachers. In science, the most important lesson that we can learn in, well, not only K-12, in the university as well, is how to make scientific thought a part of our lives, the process of doing science. And so the challenge is, what can you do in a classroom situation that doesn't feed facts? Now, this is true, this is true, this is true, easy in, easy out, but rather something that will stick around for the rest of the person's life, how to do science. And that can only be done by doing science. Genome sequencing produces enormous amounts of data, which is where computers and the science of bioinformatics comes in. The problem is, few people trained as biologists can also program computers. As a scientist and educator, Jeff Elhai looked for and created a way to bridge that bioinformatics gap. And that's where BioBike got started, a graphical interface that speaks the language of molecular biology, that enables biologists to answer the questions that are important to them. Jeff Elhai now uses the BioBike program to get students active in cutting edge molecular biology without them having to understand computer language. In order to do uh, extensive research, and um, there's some things you just can't do by hand with all the uh, mass amounts of information that we have now, the data banks, and globally there's so much information to access you really need something like this computer skills to do it. Jeff Elhai is taking his BioBike project out of the university and into the American school system, developing partnerships with high schools to get younger, budding scientists into the picture. These Virginia high school students are partnering with students at VCU who act as online mentors. Teacher Kathy Burke knows that today's biologists need to be using computers and working in teams. This is very different here in that we're actually conducting research. The students are investigating an unknown viral sequence, so they're really conducting an experiment, and they're using the computer as their tool, just as we've done experiments before in a high school classroom, but we've never had this certain approach, the same approach to the question. So that's what the project is about. Each student gets his own or her own sequence. That's theirs. No, other, no human eyes has ever seen this sequence before. And what can you make of it? What kinds of genes can you find in this sequence? What sense does it make with regards to the ecological uh, niche it was, it was taken from? Uh, what interesting things that I can't even tell you to look for? What things pop out that, it, that a human can see but a computer can't? And it's to teach us how to ask the computer questions instead of manually trying to figure out answers about nucleotides and sequences of DNA. There's too many viruses we don't know about. The people who study it don't have enough eyes to look at this. They could only be looked at in the aggregate. But there are a lot of high school students. And so if high school students can get a sufficient understanding of the process and the tools that they can use, then they can contribute to science in a way that the field cannot do themselves because there's not enough people. And so now we have all this information out there, and what do we do with it? So now we really have to have biologists that are capable and um, comfortable working with computers to study all this information. And that's why the field of bioinformatics comes in. I believe that uh, it's just to help us in the future with, um, if we're going to a career with genetics or anything, uh, medicine, I think actually anything will help with it, anything that uses DNA. A biologist, I don't think, can any longer just simply study cells and use a microscope and, and go cut things open. They have to understand quantitative science. They have to understand computational science. They may not have to be uh, experts in, in mathematics and computer science, but they have to understand that they have to be able to either apply it themselves or work with others who can. So. We have what we're trying to build now are those biologists that are comfortable using computers um, as their tool, just like a microbiologist had to be comfortable using a microscope as a tool. So it's really that's the information age has brought us to that. It's important to be able to take information from multiple sources and build it into your thinking. 
you will not understand biological life the way you need to until you understand it as a system with systems-based information or systems-based properties that quite honestly the more traditional approaches have never had the capacity to deal with. Now we do.